Hello and welcome back to JimMurphyMP.com, a way of keeping in touch with local and national news. And I'm here in the Great Hall here at Westminster with a cast of 60, all from St Ninian Secondary School. Um, they've come down and not an annual visit, the first time, you, first time you, I think you've, most of you have ever been here. Now, we're in Westminster Hall, we're going to do a wee question and answer session, but Westminster Hall is probably the oldest part of, of the building. I'm not a professional um, tour guide, someone will do that for you, but I think it's from the 11th century this building was built, and it's where they've had banquets, royal banquets, it's, it's been used for all sorts of different purposes. It was a courtroom, the trial of... Um, Guy Fawkes, Charles I, took place here. Um, the trial of William Wallace, immortalised in that movie Braveheart, wasn't entirely historically accurate, but it took place here on the 23rd of August, 1305, just up at uh, the top of those steps there. So it's been used through the centuries for really important purposes. It's used when there's a coronation, when the Queen wants to make a speech, Barack Obama, spoke here last year, His Holiness the Pope spoke, spoke on those steps last year as well, so it's used, it's a, it's a really important part of the building. Um, some people, some school students and school pupils come and say, it'd be a great place for a five-a-side football game or some sort of something else, but that's, to my knowledge, it's never been used for that. King Henry VIII, I think, I think used it for playing tennis, um, but as members of Parliament, we're not allowed to do that, but it's great uh, that you're all here and you're going to go on your tour. Now, some of you had some questions, so if you want to just say your questions, and I'll try and give some answers. Yep. And if you try and say it quite loud so they can pick it up. Did you always want to What's be your name? Dominic. Dominic. Did you always want to be an MP? All right. Okay. Dominic's asked if I always want to be an MP. <laughs> um, I got elected by accident uh, in that I'm a Labour politician, and Eastwood or East Renfrewshire was always very conservative. Now, you're school students, so I'm not going to try you into, dra drag you into the party politics, but it had always been Tory. So when I stood, I was 29, um, and uh, Tony Blair beat John Major as Prime Minister, and I was elected as a consequence, but it had been Tory way back to the 1920s, so I wasn't expected to win. The reason I wanted to be an MP is that um, I grew up um, well, not far from your school, really, although the, student, the kids aren't al allowed to go to your school anymore in the future. I grew up in Ardennes. Um, St Dinian's hadn't been built, so I went to Bellarmine. Uh, but so growing up poor in Glasgow, and then my family emigrated to South Africa. So I'd grown up white in South Africa, made me realise that politics was a way to change things, um, and that the world's an unfair place. Whether it was being poor in Glasgow or white in South Africa, you saw the massive inequality, particularly in South Africa, during apartheid, which you'll, be, you'll study about, I'm sure, just the way in which the kind of horrible racism of it all. So that's why I get involved in politics. And I just got—I was the—I was the right place at the right time when an election came, and I got elected to be an MP. Who else? Anyone else? Question? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Then what's your name? Scott. Campbell. Scott Campbell. Well, you all know his name, of course. You're Scott, <laughs> but I don't. Um, Scott's question is: Can Ed Miliband and the Labour Party get us out? Of it? Get out of recession. Get us out of recession as a country. Now, again, I'm not here to ram politics down your throat, but I think so. In particular, I think there's a better way of stopping so many young people being out of work. When I was youngster, it was a decent time ago. I was unemployed, and too many people unemployed. And you stick in at school, you go to college, you go to university, you try and find a job. It's the government's, it's the government's responsibility to try and make that a bit easier for you. And what this government's doing, I think, is, is making it harder for young people to find work. And then when people, young people are out of work, they're getting stuck in unemployment for far too long. So there's just got to be a better way of organising things. Um, no party's perfect. We all make mistakes. But there is a much better way of organising the economy. And unfortunately, the government seemed to have prioritised looking after the rich at the expense of looking after real people and normal people. Uh, rewarding bankers rather than people who are just middle of the road, hard working folk. Anyone else? Yep. Alright, what's your name? Amy. Amy's question uh, was about a lot of young folk who are going abroad to look for work. What would we do? How do you sort it? 
and the truth is there's still a lot of young people come particularly to London because London London is still better than a lot of cities for um, for finding work particularly in countries like Ireland and, and Spain and now Greece of course with the terrible things that happened in Greece um, the best thing you can do I think is give if the economy's working, there are jobs. And another thing you can do is, not everyone goes to university. Hopefully as many of you as possible go to university. Hopefully. Stick in it and do it. But things like apprenticeships. There's nothing wrong with getting an apprenticeship and getting a trade and, and doing those sorts of things. So governments have got to make sure, the main thing we've got to make sure is that people have some money in their pocket. You only have money in your pocket if you've got a job. And if you're spending money, then the economy kind of works. Unfortunately... The lack of confidence at the moment means, I mean, caused by a lot of unemployment, just means we're heading in the wrong direction. But you'll have your own views. And I guess after this, once you've been in the tour, I'll happily come into the school and talk to modern studies classes or history class about your experience of being here and what you'd like to, what you'd like to see change. The main thing is to remember this building's been here for hundreds of years. It's survived wars. It's survived all sorts of conflicts. Um, the Great Fire of 1834, much of the building survived the Fire of 1834, so hopefully it can survive a visit by St Linian's High School. <laughs> All right. So leave the building in the same condition you found it. So a lot of other people use this place. But you'll see when you wander around, I mean, apart from all the history, it's like a little town, this, really, this building. There are thousands of people that work in it. I think there are five restaurants, there are two post offices, there's a doctor's, there's a hairdresser's, there's too many bars, there's a gymnasium, um, and it's like, it's like a small town, it's like a big town in a small city. It's self-confined, it's an incredible place to work. There's a parliament, an art gallery, a museum, and much else. All right, so enjoy your visit, get in touch, and I'll come along to the school if you fancy me coming, and enjoy the, your whole week visit to London. All right, cheers, guys.